Since Southampton were relegated from the Premier League, there's been a lot of speculation surrounding their big players, such as Lavia, Ward-Prowse, Carl Walker-Peters and many more, as to where they will most likely be heading now the club has been relegated. Russell Martin has taken over at the club and been tasked with rebuilding the side and getting them back to the top flight. Today we're going to simulate his job in FIFA 23 as we look to complete a two-season rebuild to see if they can make it back up to the Premier League and then stay there. A warm welcome to you all. Without further delay, we are pleased to introduce your new manager. All right then guys, so today we are going to be rebuilding this Southampton side ready for the championship season. This is how the starting 11 currently looks, but there is going to be a lot of change to this, I would imagine, as there are going to be some big players that are departing that I don't think will stay at Southampton, the likes of Salisu, James Ward-Prowse. I'm not sure on Bella Kotchap and Livramento. Uh, I'm going to sort of assess each player depending on if we get any offers for them. But let's jump straight into the first transfer window. Going to be shifting on a lot of the players that I think are too good to be here and rebuilding this squad for the championship. All right, guys, we're just seeing our first sale go through here. It's Mohamed El Yanoussi, who I'm actually pretty sure was released by Southampton in real life. So he's off to France. Okay, then, guys, our first signing is through the door. And as you can see, it's a somewhat realistic one. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain rejoining Southampton, the team that he broke onto the scene with. Of course, he's been at Liverpool for the past God knows how many years, but he's always been played with injury. I honestly don't know where this guy is going to end up in real life, but we've brought him back to Southampton in this save. I'm not sure he'd necessarily drop down to the championship, as when he's fit, he's, he is a decent player, but we've brought him in for this save regardless. Oxlade Chamberlain, welcome back to Southampton. All right, then, guys, our first big sale of the summer has gone through with Mohamed Salisu joining Ajax for 15.2 million. This guy's way too good to be playing in the championship in my opinion more like champions league with ajax all right then guys our next signing through the door is another former arsenal man and also technically another former southampton man was on loan at the club and having gone back to his parent club arsenal and been released ainsley maitland niles is going to join a backup with southampton i think this guy needs to find a home he's still only 24 years of age and he's clearly got a little bit about him, but he's been loaned out loads. He's never really settled at Arsenal. This guy needs to find a home. Been at the club before. We've brought him back on a permanent now that he's been released. Maitland-Niles, welcome to the Saints. Another big sale out of Southampton this time. It's Kyle Walker-Peters. Way too good again to be playing in the Championship. Needs to be playing Premier League football. And he will be doing that next year at Bournemouth. And my next signing in this rebuild is through the door. It's Jamal Lewis, the Northern Ireland international. Now third choice left back at St. James's Park with Dan Byrne and Matt Target both ahead of him. He's probably not going to get much football there next year. And I think when he was at Norwich, he was really good in the second division and really made a name for himself. So we brought him back down. He's dropped down a level to the championship. But I think between him and Roman Perot, we've got really good competition in the left back position. OK, then, guys, this next bit of business for me makes total sense. We have signed Flynn Downs from West Ham United and our captain, James Ward-Prowse, has gone the other way. Now, I've seen a lot of rumours that West Ham are interested in Ward-Prowse and actually that Southampton would like to replace him with Flynn Downs. So I've just done a straight swap. I hadn't received any offers for JWP and I'm fairly sure he will leave in this summer window to play Premier League football next year. So it's a straight swap. Flynn Downs is my replacement for the captain, JWP. WP. Another sale going through here with Lianco, the Brazilian, going back to South America to play for River Plate in Argentina. Not sure if he's one that will potentially stick around in real life or head out 
He's not been at Southampton for too long, so I'm not really sure. But we got an offer from South America, so that one kind of made sense. Um, one of our youngsters, Dinel Simeu, going out on loan here to FC Twente for two years. Good to get him some football. And I believe, yes, Musa Gineppo has also left to join Hertha Berlin for three and three quarter million. Again, like Lianco, another one. I'm not sure if he's going to stay around this year. It's difficult to know with every single player. Gineppo could potentially stay, but like with Lianco, we got an offer from uh, from Europe this time. So Musa Gineppo joins up with her to Berlin, who have actually been relegated in real life, so that he will be playing in the second division in Germany. All right, then, guys, another big player departing. Unlike in real life, the fee is very small for just two million pounds. And I'm pretty sure this guy's going to stay in England, whether it be Liverpool or potentially Chelsea or, or elsewhere. In the game, we sold him to Inter Milan as it was the only offer I could get. But he he's such a baller, this lad. Uh, he definitely needs to be playing higher than the championship. And I'm fairly sure he will get a move somewhere in real life. All right, guys, I'm really excited about this one. After selling Mohamed Salisu, we finally bought our replacement. It's Andrew Omabamadele from Norwich City really big fan of this guy and I could potentially see this one going through Norwich have had a few years down in the championship now and I think Andrew Omabamadeli may be interested in playing top flight football and may see Southampton as a quicker route back to the top flight he's a really good young Irish defender and he will be a great centre-back partner for Bella Koch at. now the deal going through here for one of our squad players Will Smallbone is off to Fortuna Dust Dorf for I think just over two million pounds so good to get him off the books I don't really see him playing much once again Manchester City and Southampton doing business for a young player this time it's Cole Palmer coming to the Saints on a one-year loan I think for Cole Palmer he definitely needs to get some more first team football he's featured a couple of times for Manchester City but he needs to play consistently to kind of elevate his game to the next level we've seen already a lot of times Manchester City and Southampton doing business for young players so I could potentially see this one happening although they might want a premier league loan for palmer but he's in for the year on loan all right guys i've just completed another tactical swap deal um i was planning on bringing in phil jones as a free agent he has now joined us but he'd already joined wolfsburg in the save so i swapped douge chaletta Saar the other way and that seems like a much more realistic outcome phil jones the englishman dropping down to the championship and chaletta Saar, who's played at quite a high level in France with Marseille joins the Bundesliga outfit all right then guys big signing here as Joel Perot joins us from the Swans Swansea City for just under seven million pounds another young player so fits in with the mold at Southampton and he's someone who is known to score goals at this level really happy to get him in and I've just made my final signing of the window Tom Davis is in after his release from Everton he was a free agent and to bolster up our midfield options I think he is a great little signing on a free never really made it in the Premier League despite having spells where he looked like he could be a class player never really settled into the team and went on a good run of form he's dropped down to the championship with us still only 24 years of age so very happy with this signing to bolster out the squad okay then guys my final signing of the summer is Aaron Ramsey from Aston Villa brother of of Jacob who had a good loan spell at Middlesbrough in the championship last year joins us in a straight swap deal for Mislav Orsic so we've managed to get rid of Orsic staying in the Premier League and we've got a good young talent in Aaron Ramsey we've also managed to loan out all of these young players so I'm hoping that we will see some movement between them this season all right then guys that will do it for this first transfer window back in the championship I think we've done a good job of making the team more championship ready Okay guys, so this is how the starting 11 looks going into this first season in the championship. I'm pretty happy with the team. It kind of fits the mould of a Southampton team in real life with young 
hungry players. You look at our back four, we've got uh, Bazunu in goal, Omabama Deli, Bella Kotchap, Livramento. And we've got exciting players such as Alcaraz and Perot taking us forward with a lot of young talent on the bench. So let's sim to the end of this first season and see if we can make it back up to the Premier League. All right, guys, we've made it to the end of the sim. You can see a big win against Leeds, but followed up by a 4-1 loss to Hull City. Let's go and take a look. Did we manage to do it? Our manager rating is not looking good. But we have done it, guys. Second place. Unfortunately, we didn't win the league. That loss on the final day, I believe, meant that we slipped down. Yeah, uh, Leeds drew 1-1 at QPR at Loftus Road. If we'd beaten Hull, we would have finished top. But we are back in the Premier League for Season 2. A pretty good season all round. You can see the full standings here. But despite the board not being happy, we will be returning to the Premier League for Season 2 of this rebuild. So just looking at the statistics here, a really good season for Che Adams. 17 goals and 1 assist and a plus 2 overall for him. And our new signing, Joel Perot, also with a pretty decent season. 15 goals, 4 assists for him and plus 3 growth. And Adam Armstrong in 3rd place with 10 goals and 3 assists in limited minutes. Good to see some pretty decent output from our strikers. Nathan Teller with nine goals from left midfield, Armstrong with eight from right midfield, and a pretty good season from the Ox as well, who's wearing the armband with four goals and nine assists. So back to the Premier League for season two. We are going to have a lot of business to do. It's a big step up from the Championship to the Premier League, and we are looking at to secure safety for Russell Martin and his Southampton side in season two. We're going to go and take a look how the Premier League finished and. And most interestingly, who got relegated from the top flight. So there is the full Premier League table. Manchester City champions again, 10 points clear of Manchester United. Liverpool and Newcastle making up the top four with Spurs and Arsenal going into the Europa League and Chelsea into the conference. Well, both Vincent Company's Burnley side and Sheffield United were both able to just about avoid the drop, unlike Luton Town, who finished rock bottom. They are also joined by AFC Bournemouth and also Crystal Palace. So definitely some potential signings from those clubs. But let's head into Season 2 to see how we rebuild the side, this time for the Premier League. So here we are guys in season two. The squad is definitely going to need a little bit of help if we are to survive in the Premier League. As I mentioned, it's a big step from the Championship to the Prem. So we're going to try and shift on some Deadwood and bring in some start quality that will help us stay in the top flight. Let's get straight to it. So I've actually just simmed through one day and we've seen that Alex McCarthy has already left the club. Um, he agreed a pre-contract to join up with Auxerre in France. So that is absolutely fine. Our backup keeper is the first man to depart the club. All right, guys. So I'm going to start with showing you the players that we're going to look to probably shift on this year there's only two actually on the transfer list and they are jack stevens and Stuart armstrong both around the age of 30 and probably not going to be at premier league quality we've also got sam adozi aaron ramsey seku mara and dom ballard on the loan list in fact i'm going to remove ballard i'm only really focusing on the players that i really want to go out and get first team football so adozi ramsey and seku mara on the loan list and we've got 84 million pounds in the budget to spend on new signings this season so that should be enough to bring in three or four quality players to really improve the first 11. all right guys seeing our first departures here with Jack Stevens heading out and I quite like this sale he's gone to Leeds United who obviously play in England they came up with us last year I could potentially see this one happening Jack Stevens requested a transfer he will be moving to Ellen Road and we've also seen Seku Mara head out on loan to Rail via Delid for 
two seasons so good to get him at some first team football he's our fourth choice striker so he's not going to get a huge amount of game time here so hopefully with two years football in spain he will continue to develop all right guys our first signing is in and you can see him here mark gerhi from relegated Crystal Palace. This guy is way too good to be playing in the championship. And if he wants to make it as a regular England starter, he needs to be playing in the top flight. So we have brought him in from the relegated side for £30 million pounds plus Phil Jones going the other way. Jones was a decent squad player for that first year in the championship. But we're back in the big time now. Mark Gerhi joins. It's a five-year contract on 50 grand a week. And this guy is a leader already at just 23 years of age. He will be a brilliant centre-back partner to our male Bellacott chap. And I'm really happy to bring this guy in. Another departure here, but just a loan deal for Aaron Ramsey going out to Belgium for two years to get some first-team football with Club Bruges. And we've also seen another youngster, Don Ballard, going out for two years to FC Sion in Switzerland. Okay, guys, a quick fire double signing. The first one being a backup keeper in Tom Heaton. We obviously lost Alex McCarthy at the beginning of July. So we bring him in just as backup to Gavin Bazunu in case anything happens to our number one. And the second of those signings is another Englishman. I wanted to add another striker to the mix. And we have raided another of the relegated clubs, Bournemouth, to bring in Englishman Dominic Solanke. Now, I'm really happy with this transfer. It costs us just £9 million. He's staying on the south coast, trading at Bournemouth for Southampton. And I think in real life, in the season just gone in the Premier League, this guy led the line for Southampton absolutely perfectly. We've brought him in on a four-year deal. And I think him and Joel Perrault complement each other really nicely. So although Che Adams had a good year in the Championship last season, I think Solanke is our man for this year. Well, guys, we have done it again. We've gone back to Roy Hodgson and Crystal Palace and completely raided them. This time for their star man, Michael Elise. This guy is an absolute baller. I love him so much. We've brought him in for a cut price deal of just £23.5 million on a five-year contract. With us looking to move on, Stuart Armstrong, he is an absolute beast of a signing at such a cheap fee. At just 21 years of age, he's got so much room to grow and he is going to be an absolute staple in our starting 11 on that right hand side. Another loan deal going through here as Sam Adozi heads out to Germany on a two-year loan to join up with Schalke. There's been a lot of Englishmen who have gone out to Germany and succeeded, so I'm hoping that Sam Adozi can be the next. And guys, quite a big unexpected sale here. Ibrahima Diallo is being sold back to his home nation, France, to join up with Stad René. He wasn't someone I was actively looking to sell, but we got a bid. We negotiated the sale of 10 and a quarter million, which I think is a pretty decent price for him. And that should give us enough money to bring in my number one midfield target. And here is that man. It is the Frenchman, Maxence Cacare. Don't even try and get me to pronounce that with a French accent. He is in though from Lyon for £27 million. We literally had to scrape the bottom of the barrel to get this deal across the line as Lyon were playing hardball. He signs on a four year deal on forty-five grand a week and I'm a big fan of this guy. I believe he was just playing at the uh, under 21 European Championship for France and I think he's got a really really bright future he is our marquee signing to close out this summer transfer window first sim of the season guys and it's a brilliant 3-2 victory against Newcastle who finished in fourth place last year Joel Perot with a double and the captain Oxlade-Chamberlain with the opener brilliant way to start the season 
Guys, we have finally seen the sale of Stuart Armstrong go through. He is off to the Netherlands to play for PSV. And we ended up getting five and a half million for him. So I think I'm now pretty settled with the squad that we have going into the second season. All right, guys, so this is how the starting 11 looks for season two with Southampton. Will this be enough to keep us in the top flight? I think it will be. We've now got a lot of quality with the likes of Kakare and Elise, Mark Gurhi at the back. So I think this will be enough to keep us in the top flight. I think there's worse teams than us. So let's sim through to the end of the season and see how Russell Martin's side gets get on and if they can survive all right guys so we're just heading towards the end of the sim here and just a couple of things firstly we have been so inconsistent this season i think we will have survived the drop but some of the results we've picked up have been crazy the second thing is we've drawn a hell of a lot of games i actually watched the sim go through this year and we drew a lot of games around the middle of the season we've ended with three defeats on the bounce as well I don't know, I think we've survived, but it could be quite tight. Let's stop the sim there and go and check it out. So yeah, guys, as you can see there, we, we did survive. We hit the magical 40 points, although it's not really 40 points that you need anymore to stay up in the Premier League. Luckily, there were three teams who were a lot worse off than us. We were 11 points clear, but we were nowhere near pushing really for the top half of the table. It's a pretty decent first season back in the Premier League. You can see our problem we conceded so many goals 75 is one of the worst in the league and i know we got thumped a couple of times we lost 6-0 away at the tottenham hotspur stadium and 5-1 away at the etihad but it's not a terrible season 14th place we survived and it's definitely progress for southampton and something for them to build on so another really good season from Joel Perot, the Dutch forward. 17 goals and 5 assists. His goals definitely will have made a huge difference in us staying up. Another pretty good season from Che Adams, who looks like he started the majority of our games. You can see Solanke with just the 6 goals in 28 appearances. Not great from our new signing. Armstrong outscored him. Elise had a pretty good year as well. Grew by 2 ratings, 7. Seven goals and three assists. Gerhi looked like he had a pretty good year as well, growing by two overall. So I'm just going to very quickly run through the other competitions to close out the episode. You can see the Spurs finally ended their trophy drought with an FA Cup victory over North London rivals Arsenal. Carabao Cup was won by Manchester City in an all-Manchester affair. The Conference League was won by Jose Mourinho and Roma once again. The Europa League, again, another team that won it just a few years ago. Eintracht Frankfurt winning the Europa League once again, this time over Marseille in what looks like a thrilling final. And another thrilling final in the Champions League is Manchester City beat PSG by four goals to three to win another Champions League. But guys, that is where we will end it. You can see the final table here. Sheffield United, Brighton and Preston going down. I was finishing in 14th and it was Liverpool who ended up winning the Premier League. So that will do it for today's video, guys. We did manage to complete our objective of getting Southampton back to the Premier League and then maintaining their Premier League status. We built a nice platform for them to build on going forward. Will they be able to do it in real life? I guess only time will tell. I hope to catch you for another video very soon, guys, and peace.